Well, hello, slurds, and welcome back to the Cheers to Comics podcast. I am your host, Brian Wayne, and this is Poll List Priorities. This Poll List Priorities, I will be prioritizing the books that come out on the 16th of October, 2019. And when I say prioritizing, I put these books in no order whatsoever. At most, maybe alphabetical by publisher to some extent, but even then, that that would be coincidental. <laughs> uh, the, the the fact, the point of this podcast is to, well, just fill you in on what the hell's coming out next week. Comics are still coming out, and not everybody has access to a previews magazine, or uh, you know, don't know how to work previews world. That that website, I don't fucking know. Or maybe you just have to be told. I'm not judging you. Those people actually is what keeps me going. Uh, well, I, and in case you didn't get the Twitter message, yes, I know, episode didn't, episode 51 did not come out as normally scheduled. Well, I, I have a bit of a confession. It was planned. Uh, nothing got fucked up, but I fell into peer pressure and took a day off. Uh... You guys may not realize this, but this this whole thing it's it's a one man band. Yes, I've had help in the beginning, but those those days are long gone. And I've had way too many uh, close people in my life tell me you fucking cool it, Brian. So I listened for just a moment, took it easy. I still put out two episodes. Uh, I just didn't put out episode fifty one. Episode fifty one will come out on Tuesday as normally scheduled i got a whole stack of books here i'm fucking digging on but that's that's for another podcast this is pull list priorities let's get down to it i got my beer you got your beer um cool let's do this let's start out with some indies <laughs> uh action lab all right uh danger zone so action lab has a couple of things coming on here and Action Lab is known for their uh, their zombie tramps and their their sexy characters, but also some dope ass books like Going to the Chapel and Banjax. Not that Zombie Tramp and all that's not dope ass books. There's just nothing I've personally read. I'm really not into to sexualized comics for whatever reason. But nevertheless, all you I'm not judging you pervs that are into sexualized comics and your zombie tramps and your vermperillas and whatnot, we've got Amal... Alright, let's try this again. Amalgama. Space Zombie. Numero 1. Jason Martin Winston Young. Now, check it out. Uh, now in our own series. The fan favorite zombie tramp vampire dollface mashup with the powers of all three iconic characters. Oh, shit. Alright, well, look at this. Rocketed into space by the Danger Doll Squad. Amalgama. Space Zombie, plots a course for explosive sci-fi grindhouse <coughs> action. Sweet. All right. Well, you know, that actually might be something I pick up just to have the number one, to be honest. Uh, the other number one that, yeah, I get to talk about Action Lab extensively is Kill Switch, number one. Now, um, this doesn't, this is not or at least according to the cover, it doesn't seem like your over-sexualized book, I get kind of a Banjax feel out of it. And I don't mean it looks like Banjax, I mean it looks like we're going to get a gritty, hard-hitting, fucking action-packed story that's not really caricatured. Uh, Susan Bridges, Jeffrey Bridges, and Walter Giovanni. In a future where clairvoyant augurs are used for their powers, but feared, held captive, and persecuted... A disaffected military major is shocked into action by the grim realities of the auger's treatment. She puts her life and career on the line to help them attempt a daring escape from captivity. I, you know, I'm... <sighs> the, the description doesn't really give me a whole lot as far as, hey, that's new. But that, I don't put that on the, the what this book has to offer at all. Frankly, just because the last few books I've picked up out of Action Lab have been fucking bangers. And I've actually had... Go back and listen to the interview with uh, Rylan Grant from Banjax and Aberant. And uh, David Pepos. 
going to the cop. I interviewed both those dudes. So Action Lab has a close, uh, close, close spot to my heart. It's right around the heart, more like the lungs. <laughs> All right. Let's keep the shit train rolling. Albatross funny books. So being that it's October and Halloween and all one could only expect that uh, a publisher like Albatross funny books would be putting out some dope ass Halloween shit. And of course, our boy Eric Powell is man in spook house. Stories, scary stories fit for kids. Oh shit. You know what? That's... I'm going to have to pick this one up for my little nephew. Eric Powell, Gabe Soria, Steve Mannion, and Gideon Kendall. And Eric Powell did that cover. So I, I think just the, uh, the what I read on the cover does, does it just fine. We got 32 pages for 4 bucks. Yup. That is, uh... All you ballers out there, I think, instead of candy, just hand out $4 fucking comic books. If you pre-order it through your LCS and you got to Subscription list, you probably get a little bit of a discount. I don't know if Albatross gives discounts now that I think about it, though. They might be a little small. But fact is, if you're balling, you're not worried about saving 10%. Oni Press. The point is, hand out or comics. Hand out comics instead of candy. Dungeons and Dragons and Ricks and Mortys Parts 2's Oh My. Painscape is the name of this arc. I got that whole title mixed up. J Rick and Morty vs. Dungeons and Dragons 2. Painscape. <laughs> now, for those of you new to the podcast, I love this crossover. This might be one of my favorite crossovers of all time. And I don't I'm not sure you could really call it a crossover so much as it is a group of beloved characters set in a setting unfamiliar to them, but familiar to us fourth wallers. I don't know. I love this fucking book and uh, sometimes, you know, volume twos, they don't just, it's, you get sweet colitis. And, or it's just the same shit continuing on, and really, all, uh, volume two is just uh, an excuse to say, hey, we wanted to take a break for a few months. That is not the case. This is a whole different concept. It is setting up something brilliant. It's probably just going to go four issues again, but. Uh, and I do get all of the character sheet variants for all of these. Those are the only... I don't actually get the, the A covers for these. Those character sheets are on fucking point. Wizard Rick! Bolt Comics. Bolt Comics, yeah. Not a whole lot of indies to really talk about this week. Uh, Alright, here we go with some Halloween stuff. Alright. Cult Classic Creature Feature number one. Alright. Elliot Rawl. And art by John Bivens. Eons ago, visitors from outer space buried an item of unimaginable power into the primordial swamps that would one day become King Lake, a quaint little basin on the edge of Whisper, USA. Millions of years later, a comet's radioactive waves awaken the monster slumbering beneath the lake as the beast feeds on America's sweet, delicious youth. Brain slugs infect the quiet town, causing victims to vomit up their kill-hungry zombified skeletons. This one does not seem like for kids, yo. And there's still four, five, six more sentences to this, but I, I got all I want. Uh, Vault Comics has been murdering it. I'm loving all of the stuff. I, I, wouldn't, I don't even want to say shit, because it's not shit. It's quality. Fucking quality coming from Vault. And that's not all. They got another one. Oh, wait, no, that's the... Oh, that's just a dope-ass variant. Never mind. I was about to say, it's too good to be true for them to have two Halloween books. Gotta spread it out. I got a lot of October, baby. Five Wednesdays in this motherfucker. Valiant Entertainment got some shit coming out. We got Killers, number four of five. So, obviously, a mini-series. I'm not reading Killers, but here's your reminder. And Psylords, number five. I've, I've heard it's gotten better. But I, I, know, I, I really didn't give this book the chance it probably deserves. I read the first issue, and I'm telling you, Bloodshot and XO, I think that's all I really care about in Valiant. We'll see what happens when we get a, a Ninjak revival or Ninja K or whatever the fuck you call them. Dark Horse Comics is what I'm going to next. Alright, what do we got from Dark Horse Comics? Looking like a whole lot of... A whole lot of trades. Oh, yeah, here we go, baby. Mask. I pledge allegiance to the mask number one of four. You're goddamn right. I'm buying some masks. Christopher Cantwell. Patrick Reynolds. 
Whew. I, I don't think I need to give a description at all. I'm not going to attempt to read all of that. It's the mask. Come on. And just looking at the cover, you, I would imagine, and the, the rest of the title, I would imagine it's got some sort of political agenda to it, and probably comedic would be my guess. Neil Gaiman's American God's Moment of Storm. Moment of the Storm, I would imagine, is what that is supposed to be. Uh, like I said, I still haven't gotten around to finishing the last fucking season, and I want to watch the last season before I read the comic. But I have read the first volume of Neil Gaiman's American Gods, and it's fucking incredible. Two volumes behind. Um, and Strayed. I'm not sure what Strayed is, but it, let's see. Lou's cosmic adventures lead him to, to a survive of a terrible galactic war. <sighs> I'm sorry, that wasn't... I, I'm not stupid. Well, I mean, I am, but I, I, I read okay. I read just fine. Those, these fucking previews words, guys, it's a little pre you know what, previews world, if you're listening, and I'm sure you are, I will edit all of your uh, preview descriptions for three cents a word. <laughs> all right, continuing, IDW, we've got some crow hack and slash happening, I read the first issue of that, and I, I turns out I don't know enough about hack slash, and the lady crow kind of threw me off. It's it's not Brandon Lee, and Transformers number thirteen. Will they throw a punch? I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, I had to drop this one after seven issues. But yeah, god damn it, IDW, you do everything so well except for Transformers, except for when they're with the Ghostbusters. I can't say that out of experience, but I haven't heard a bad thing about the Transformers uh, Ghostbusters crossover. So, someone's doing something right, but not everything. Boom Studios. Big week for Boom. At least if you're someone like myself that is enjoying the fuck out of these books. Three big books coming out. Uh, Firefly number 10. I'm not reading Firefly, but it's about all the Firefly you Firefly fans are fixing to get from my understanding. I, but these next two here, all about it. We've got Once in Future number three. It says three of six, but it has been announced that it's extended into ongoing. So they're probably going to keep it three of six, and then at least the way it's advertised. But this baby's going the distance. And that last fucking issue? Oh, good God, it's good. And Something is Killing the Children number two. Didn't expect to dig this one. As a matter of fact, I'm very impressed with Tunyon's uh, ability to keep it short and simple dialogue-wise. There's very little dialogue in this, and he's known to be a wordy writer. And not that I have anything against that, except for w when I have a lot of books to read, and I don't like spending more than 45 minutes on one book. <laughs> and Tinian books tend to do that to me. This Tinian book, not so much. Something is killing the children is fucking dope. And it's not what you expect it to be. It's great. That does it for the indies. Let's move on to the big two. This one's actually going... This podcast, you, you probably realize, is going really, really quick. That's because this is this is a week of quality, not quantity, people. And that's okay. It helps the wallets. You're able to catch up a little bit. And there's five Wednesdays, this, like I say, this October. So I'm fucking mucho take it easy. It's all right. Uh, with that being said, let's continue on to DC Comics. Aquaman, the old Aquaman. I'm not reading Aquaman, but, I mean, we're at issue number 53 now. Uh, Batman, number 81, we are reading. We're getting closer to the end of Tom King's arc. Uh, because 80 fell on the off week, I didn't get the chance to talk about how I felt about 80. And yeah, it was it was fine. It was it was cool. It's definitely I mean, you know these last few issues are gonna be fucking bangers. He's he's really spacing this out, Mr. King. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. We've got Flash Forward number two of six. You know I'm not a Flash fan, but uh, let alone a Wally West fan. I mean I respect the character for show. He's OP as fuck. But I never really got into reading the character. On a, on a solo stance, but this supposedly is him, or Wally, coming back into uh, into some shit after the old Heroes in Crisis fiasco, speaking of Tom King. I don't know. I don't know. 
Justice League, number 34. They're really pumping out this story. Justice Doom more keeps going. I, oh, I still gotta read fucking part four, because that was on that same week that I didn't get to talk about. Yes, I slowed down. I didn't get to read everything. That's all right, though. I'm okay with that. Justice League has been awesome. Justice... Oh, no, that's the trade. Um, Lucifer. All right, yeah, a little bit of DC Vertigo action while it's still a thing. Lucifer is awesome when I do read. I get every issue, but uh, I, I don't always read every issue because it's uh, it's hard to explain from at least the issues that I've read. I have a hard time explaining to you all, so it's not always a, a pull list priority. DC's putting out Mad Magazine number 10. We've got some... Some folks asking about this one, and oh, you know what? Awesome too. That's cool. Mad Magazine is still kind of a thing for at least a couple more months, to my understanding. Ooh, we've got a DC number one. What is this? What? Metal Men. Dan Didio. Yeah, Mr. DC Big Shot. Michelle Delecki. All right, the Metal Men are back and back and back and back again as we take a deep look into Doc Magnus's lab as he experiments with what it meant to be sentiment. Mm. Meanwhile, a mysterious liquid nth metal hmm, has appeared in the science site as Challenger's Mountain that appears to have come through the dark multiverse. Fuck. Dan Didio on a book. I'm gonna have to check that out, I think. Might have to check that out. Nightwing. Oh boy, this is going to be a big one, guys. Uh, hmm. I, I don't want to spoil anything. I think I know what's going to happen. Ugh, but god damn, is Dan Jurgens and Ronan Click kept throwing down. I know a lot of people are pissed off at the, the Rick Grayson and Team No Dick and all that, but personally, I'm liking Team No Dick. Yeah, I'm coining that term. Fucking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, dude, this this Court of Owls, this Talon arc, very, very, very impressive. Uh, Superman smashes the clan. What is that? What? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. From yep, yep, KKK. There it is. Son of a bitch. All right, that's interesting. Look, look at. Oh, we've got a black label book. Speaking of Superman. Uh, we're ending the Superman Year One Frank Miller stuff, so in the military. And First issue I thought to be very interesting. Second issue kind of lost me. We'll see how Frankie Miller and John Romita Jr. wrap up. Number three. Keeping it going. Teen Titans, number 35. I don't... Oh, God damn it, I keep saying I'm going to read Teen Titans and I keep forgetting to pick it up. because, Ugh. Guys, uh, listeners, anybody at all, if you're listening, reading Teen Titans, look, give me a good jumping on point, whether it's Teen Titans or Titans, one or the other. I want to read some sort of Titans book, not not Go. I don't want to read Go, but one of those other two. Give me a good jumping on point that's within the last 12 issues, and yeah, hit me up on Twitter, at Church Comics. Please let me know, and that's what I got for DC Comics. Let's move on to Marvel. Where's my... There it is. All right, we got a bunch of Absolute Carnage stuff happening. Absolute Carnage, number four, main story. It's... It's fucking coming to an end soon. But meanwhile, we've got a bunch of tie-ins still to go before we get to that fifth issue. And some of those tie-ins include... Uh, Absolute Carnage Avengers. And this is maybe one of my most anticipated tie-ins for this whole series. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for this. I want to... Oh, dude. I, I, based off of, you know, what I've read and the other tie-ins and everything, I, I have a pretty good idea of where they're going to go with it, you know, at least as far as the main bulk of the story, but I, I, I'm anxious. I want to see who gets fucked. Fucked up. No one's going to get fucked. This is Disney. Uh, Absolute Carnage Scream, number three of three. I, I'm buying this because I'm a completionist, but after reading the first issue, I don't know anything about this character. I'm not I'm not sure I personally care to know until I give, you know, I'm inclined to believe otherwise. But nevertheless, Absolute Carnage, Scream 3 of 3. But wait, there's more. We've got, uh, yeah, there it is. Absolute Carnage vs. Deadpool 3. 
of three. Uh, number two was so much better than the first one. I hope that momentum continues on. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Keep going. Oh, shit. There we go. Black Panther and Agents of Wakanda. I thought I'd only be picking up number one. You know what? I'm going to give this mo motherfucker three. Because I am I'm very, very intrigued with this Agents of Wakanda team. I like how they set it up. I do. I really like how they set all that up. And that's that's good storytelling. When you get someone like myself to take this, you know, a, a team that I normally wouldn't really give two shits about, and turn me around. And that's what they did. They turned me around. Now, uh, let's just hope they don't uh, bend me over. <laughs> Captain Marvel, number 11. Uh, it's more star stuff? I'm not sure. I, I only, I only, uh, vouch, or opted for 8 through 10, and I got 8 through 10, read 8, hoping that I could be turned out into a Captain Marvel reader, and still didn't get me, but for speculators' sake, and, well, <laughs> covers, because Mark, Mark Brooks, jeez, good lord, that dude is a fucking monster, but nevertheless, Captain Marvel fans, rejoice, your book is here, same thing with Captain America, number 15, that's a book that I just, I wish I can get into, but it's, it doesn't feel... You know, it almost feels like an indie title, and I, I mean, you'd think that would be the thing that grabs me, but it just, from, from what I understand, it's Captain America just, it's more Steve Rogers than anything, Steve Rogers Outlaw or some shit, I'm not, I'm not sure, I could be wrong on that, but nevertheless, it did not rope me in. Uh, ch -ch -ch Contagion, number three of five, so... I picked up issue one on the off week, grabbed issue two as well. I didn't read it, but I decided this this seems like a good polis prior or, um, trade negotiations episode down the road. When I don't know, I got a lot of bonus episodes lined up. But when that day comes, I, I'm I am excited to read all five of these. Uh, I, I hear a lot of comparisons to deceased, same same but different. I don't know. I'm into it. Very intrigued. Guardians of the galaxy number 10 dude donny cates's run be ending yo but i hear i hear i hear that al motherfucking ewing the immortal hulk himself is going to be taking over guardians of the galaxy whether or not it's at 11 or starting it over again starting a new volume either way i don't care i'm going to be reading it uh, i hear dude just uh, just the cover alone God damn. I don't want to give anything away because, yeah. History of the Marvel Universe, number four of six. I hear great things about this. I personally didn't connect with the first issue, but uh, nevertheless, I, like I said, I, I hear good things. My opinion means dick. This is not an opinion-based podcast. It is about information. Every once in a while, I'll let a thought or a, an opinion slip through, but by no means is it here to sway y'all. Oh, a Marvel Tales Ghost Rider, eight dollar spectacular. I wish I could just get that fucking cover. I just want, I just want the Inyuk Lee cover or Lee and Yuck or whatever the, I don't know, I don't know, but it's it's a beautiful cover. It's eight dollars and it's thick. I think the only Marvel Tales I picked up was the Iron Man. Go figure. Oh shit, Spider Man, number two of five. The J J Abrams and the uh, the. Abrams Jr. <laughs> uh, J. Th no, no, I don't know. Abrams' son. You get. You know the one. You know the one. I could not believe how uh, they they were able to twist the Spider-Man story. And oh, dude, it's so fucking good. It's out of canon. It's this is this that was a great story. It really. And I'm excited that I get a. I feel like it was just yesterday I read issue one, and here we are with issue number two. All right. Oh shit. Oh shit. X Men, motherfuckers. Motherfucker. It's here. Dawn of X. The X Men cometh. Jonathan Hickman. Lionel Francis Hugh. Get ready, guys. I I've I, uh, I still gotta read Powers. Of ten, number six. It's on the list. You'll he'll be hearing about that in issue number or er, episode fifty one. God damn. You know what? I think this is a hell of a way to fucking end a podcast. If that's not hype, if that's not fucking hype, I don't know what is. The the X-Men, they're, they're here, guys. They're, they're here. Get used to it. This is Hickman's universe. God, I have barely even touched my beer. I've been fucking talking. That's why we're only 25-minute podcast. 
Um, so, yeah, no, that's uh, that 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 does it. By no means is that everything coming out. You're gonna see stuff on the shelves that I didn't mention, and it, well, I, I can't use for time's sake as an excuse this time, but uh, this is the stuff that you know I, I want to point out. You know, for speculators. What if you're one of those guys, or you know you're just forget, forgetful like I am. Part of this podcast is for me too. I have to listen to myself uh, Tuesday beforehand so I remember what to pick up. Just kidding. I have a pull list, and you should too. Go support your LCS. Ask for about ask for about a pull list, and uh, yeah, support a small business or a large business like Mile High Comics. <laughs> That's not a plug for them. That's just my my people. You're rambling, Brian. Uh, yeah, so that does it. You guys have any input, stuff you would like me to start talking about, reminding you about that I've been skipping over for the, for whatever reason, inform me at Cheers to Comics on Twitter, or uh, you can email me too. You know, you only get so many characters on Twitter or whatever, so if, you know, you guys just want to write me something, I'll, yeah, you know, I'll give you the email. That's Cheers to Comics Podcast at gmail.com. So, yeah, write me a letter. Uh, tell me anything you want. Hate me. I don't care. I just like reading stuff from y'all. Let's me know you're listening. And uh, there's plenty of other ways to let me know you're listening. Uh, one of them is by becoming a Patreon. And this is probably my favorite way. <laughs> uh, as you know, these, these comics, they're, they're not cheap. And I do my best to, to pick up as many of them as I can. And a lot of this stuff, frankly, I really wouldn't be pick. Well, not a lot of it. Some of this stuff I wouldn't be picking up if it wasn't for my need to inform y'all. So, uh, not to lay a guilt trip or anything on you guys by any means, and I do mean that sincerely. But you know, throwing a few bucks by becoming a Patreon does actually help this podcast, and maybe eventually get to the point where I'm throwing y'all four or five episodes a week. Who knows? Uh, or you can go about helping out by just dropping a review on iTunes or wherever you listen, you know, comments, likes, wh whatever the format is, there's usually some way to give some sort of feedback, and that really does help with the, uh, the rankings of the show and, yeah, all of that good stuff. So, without further ado, I'm calling it a podcast, motherfuckers. You slurds read responsibly. You'll be hearing from me next time. Cheers.